time, but this time their attention is focused on grammatical form, right? So they've got to fill in the, the blanks as they listen. This is not really a production activity. But, and this is really quite important, comprehension-based instruction does not prohibit production. It doesn't say to learners, the students, hey, don't speak, don't write. <laughs> it says you don't need to speak, you don't need to write. that language acquisition will take place. So he is adding something very important to the early work in comprehension-based language teaching. He's saying it's not enough to just learn implicitly. It's not enough to just comprehend. There must be conscious attention right. to linguistic form. So text creation plus some kind of focus on form. You might think, in what I've said so far, that I'm kind of advocating comprehension-based language teaching. Um, and that would be true. I am advocating comprehension-based language teaching. I think it's neglected, right? But I also think that production-based language teaching has an important place to play in a Focusing on trying to get students to produce only one student can produce at a time, right? And therefore, the chances of more than 10 or 15 students having the opportunity to produce orally in a lesson is very low, right? But in comprehension-based instruction, processing instruction, every student in the class has to respond to every single input stimulus, right? So you could argue that another advantage of comprehension-based instruction is that it's actually much more active. It involves more activity on the part of the learner. We tend to think of learner activity in terms of production, but that's nonsense, really, right? If we can engage the learner in processing input carefully, yeah, that learner is being active. So that would, that would be my advice.